Today we're talking about your Android TV, which is already a pretty great device, probably, but we're gonna talk about ways that you can make it better. So this is not dependent on which type of Android TV device you have, whether it's an Nvidia Shield or a TiVo Stream 4K or one of the other seemingly dozens or hundreds of devices out there that run on Android TV. These should work for just about all of you. So let's dive in. All right, thanks for joining us today, everybody. If the tips and tricks in this video are helpful to you, if any of them work out for you, then I would appreciate a like on this video. That'd be nice. All right, so let's start with a simple one, Bluetooth controllers. This is actually a tip that I put on just about every device except for Roku. If you go to your settings and then go to remotes and accessories, you can add a Bluetooth controller there. So when I talk about a Bluetooth controller, you can go buy a brand new one on Amazon or go to Walmart or whatever. But if you have something sitting around like a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller, you can just use that and hook it into your Android TV. So why would you want to do that? Well, you know, maybe you want to use a controller like this as a remote. Maybe you hate the remote that uh, your Android TV player came with and you want to just use that or more likely you wanna do a little bit of gaming on that device. So if you have something like a PlayStation controller, then you're probably already using your PlayStation for most of your gaming. But if you wanna play some simpler games or you wanna give something to your kids or maybe download an old school emulator, then it pays off to have a good Bluetooth controller to use for that. And to do something like that, like an old school emulator, you're gonna to need to sideload that app. Which brings me to tip number two, sideloading apps. Now, sideloading apps is definitely a power user move. If you sideload apps, that means you're bringing apps onto your device that are not available in the regular app store. So if you're gonna do that, first thing you need to do is download a couple of apps that are available in the app store that will allow you to do this. So that's the first thing we're gonna go through. And then it's up to you to figure out which apps you actually want to sideload. I'm not gonna go through all of that today. But what I would recommend is if you go into the App Store, look for something called FX File Manager. There are a few things like this, but this is one that works. And then also get an app called Send Files to TV. One of them, the File Manager, just allows you to browse the apps that you're going to put on the device. The other one allows you to send apps from whatever other Android device you're using. So again, I'm not gonna go through this whole process and give you a bunch of apps to sideload. That's a different video for a different time. I only mention that because when you go to your settings and then device preferences, and then go to security and restrictions, and then unknown sources, this is where you need to turn on a, an app that will allow you to bring in apps from unknown sources. If you don't have any of the apps that I mentioned earlier, you won't have anything show up here. So it won't give you the option to turn it on. You have to have side loading apps ready to go. So once you've got that on and you've turned on the apps from, or you've turned on downloads from unknown sources, then you can go ahead and download apps from outside the Google Play Store. Again, that's not really what this video is about. I just wanna let you know that that is a possibility. So I'm gonna provide a resource in the description below if you wanna learn more about going further in this process of side loading apps. All right, now number three, tip number three is to use your phone as a remote. This is especially good, by the way, if you have to type something out because typing on TV remotes sucks. <laughs> you know, so if you have to do a username or a password or something like that, then this really comes in handy. But also if you lose your remote or if you just hate the remote that your device came with, then you can use your phone to do that. There is an Android version and an Apple version, so you can do it either way. Just install the Android TV remote control app and you're off to the races. Tip number four is to use your Android TV device as a Chromecast. As far as I know, any Android TV device should be able to act as a Chromecast. If you're not familiar with that, basically this means that you can take a mobile device or a PC and you can cast whatever video is playing there onto your Chromecast device within reason. There are apps that don't work with Chromecast. But anyway, if you're watching Netflix or you're scrolling through a photo album and you want to show people that on your screen, then the Chromecast can help you do that. And that's built into your Android TV platform. All you need to do is make sure that both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network. And then when you're watching whatever video on YouTube or on Netflix, you'll see the little Chromecast symbol up in the corner. You press that and it will allow you to send that to your TV. Pretty slick. Tip number five is to make your home screen a little homier. 
just go to your settings, go to device preferences, and then home screen, and then you can just go crazy. I like to spend a lot of time in the customized channels menu. Uh, this place is gold. This is where you're gonna show exactly what shows up on that home screen. So for instance, I don't use stars, so I'm gonna turn off that default setting. And I don't really care what Disney Plus recommends, but I do wanna see my watch list from Disney Plus, and so on and so forth. So you go through that and customize to your heart's content. Number six, the final tip for today is to make the most of your limited storage space. Now this might not be as much of a problem for Nvidia Shield users because those are you know hefty devices, but for others, like somebody using the TiVo Stream 4K or some other uh, Android TV device, you get a certain amount of on onboard storage, but what you see isn't necessarily what you get. Using my current favorite example, that TiVo Stream 4K, uh, it's my new casual streaming crush. It comes with eight gigs of storage. That's what it says on the box, right? But almost half of that is taken up by the operating system and the rest goes pretty quickly once you start downloading apps and games. So if you want to take advantage of more storage, first of all, consider expanding the storage of your device if your device is capable of it. So for instance, that TiVo Stream 4K has a USB-C port, so I could plug in an external hard drive and use that to expand the storage. That's one way to do it. Another tip would be to turn off the auto updating for your apps. The reason you might do this is that not always, but some apps get a little bit bigger every time they run an update. And so pretty soon your, your usage starts creeping up and you run out of room. Now this is not a tip that I would give to everyone. Most of the time I recommend keeping that auto updating on. But if you're writing that line on storage space and you don't have any extra space plugged in, then it might be a good idea. So what you do is you go into the Google Play Store app on your Android TV, go to the settings there, and that's where you can turn off auto updates for apps. If you do this, just don't forget to go and manually update those apps every now and then, especially your major ones, your Netflixes and Hulus and all of that. You'll need to do that manually. All right, so hopefully there's something in there that will help your Android TV experience. If this video was helpful, then give it a like. I'd appreciate that. And subscribe, ring that bell, because we've got more streaming videos and other stuff coming your way right here on reviews.org. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.